You know what I kept thinking though, as as the it got into the final like whatever it was, let's say the final hour. All hell could break loose. Let, let's say a cell tower goes down or, like, the internet goes down. Like, you know what I mean? It's a great A power point. surge. There's a snowstorm in Minnesota, and Kyle loses. Can't take calls or can't take, like, that's what I kept thinking about is, and it's, it's I don't know how well publicized it is, but the, you know, the Dale Talent, the, the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah, when the, that when happened the, in Toronto years ago. The it fax in, machine, The right? fax machine. There was a fax machine malfunction. Right. And they couldn't get a deal done that they were trying to get done. All I could think about is like, oh, it's done, but like, you know. <laughs> All right, let's bring in Phone the GM of the Maple Leafs. Here's Kyle Dubas. <laughs> Kyle, at any point where you panicked in the 4 p.m. hour that you were going to lose cell reception and somehow this couldn't get done? My phone went to no service in the St. Paul Hotel at the 20 minutes before the whole thing. And, and the Wi-Fi there was not great, uh, but Brandon Pridham, God love him, found a way to make it all happen. So we uh, we made it through uh, partially unscathed, but we're all good. Well, take us through that, though. If, if somehow the deal got signed at 5.01 p.m., like mm-hmm. it just it wouldn't count, or was there any leeway? How does that work? No, it definitely would not have counted. Wow. Yeah, I would yeah. think that's full-blown panic at that point. Uh, no cell we, reception? I mean, you must have yeah. been a little bit jittery, don't you think? No, we were good. We we had, you know, the Brandon was was sort of uh at that point when we knew that uh, by and large we had a deal and that the the, the player was coming back and 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 signing, it, it then just became a race to make sure we could get it into into the league and because uh, if even if he said called back and said that, that was always the worst case. If he called back and said I'm in, uh I'm I'll take the deal and then we couldn't get it in somehow. They 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 couldn't email it over and sign it, or or the Wi-Fi went down to the place that we were at. Then we would be uh, that would be not good because you'd get past uh, 501 and you'd have no player and uh, and have a lot of explaining to do. But it all worked out, and, and we're excited, obviously. Kyle, you mentioned William Melander placed a phone call to you. I don't know what time that was. 4:30. Um, how important was that? What I mean, I'm sure you're not going to discuss what was said, mm-hmm. but do you think that was uh, signifying that he maybe stepped away from his agent and possibly his father and said, "I got to talk to my GM on my own and and help push this forward"? Yeah, William and I, uh, Jeff, have, have talked a lot throughout the the process. So that call actually came in from the agent, and he had William on on the line. And uh, when I answered, it was it was William who said, uh, you know. Do we want to make a deal or what? And at that point, I think you know. Once he said that, I kind of had an idea that that uh, we were moving along towards uh, towards the conclusion and, and getting him him signed. Um, I only ever talked to William during the the process from from their family and his agent. So he and I had kept in close touch, and it was good that I think that that's a that'll be a positive here. There was no real awkwardness today when when he came in and I saw him for the first time. What do you say about some of the comments saying that this deal could have been done last summer? I just thoughts yeah. on that. Yeah, I I mean if this deal could have been done in the summer, we would have uh, we would have done it in the summer. Um these things sometimes take time. Uh when you say this summer you mean this past summer not 2017? Yes, this past long. summer, yeah. Yeah, so you know, I we've kind of been with it the whole time and if if this had been available to do early on, uh, certainly we would have moved to to do that. It wasn't until um, the last day where where it seemed to be uh, reality that uh, that they would be willing to accept it. So, um, you know, we were we were happy that that it got to that point, and we're excited to to have uh, William back. So, based on the way you just explained it, does this mean you you were comfortable with this number that you ended up giving him back in the summer, or well, or did you I- both move? And I think everybody, you know, they, 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 their camp started off at one point, ours started off at, at another point, and and uh, unfortunately, and I think, you know, I, I'll certainly uh, take um, my share of the blame in it. Um, you know, we, we didn't able to come to a compromise and, and a solution until until obviously the last day. So um, I think throughout the process, you you start at at both the you know at, at different ends of the spectrum depending on what side you're on and and work your way to it and I, I'm, I'm only disappointed in myself that weren't able to better explain it or be more convincing earlier on because uh, I think it's a shame that 
uh, that William hasn't been here for two months, and, and um, you know, obviously we would have liked to have him far sooner. With Kyle Dubas, GM of the Maple Leafs, um, as I'm sure you're aware, I mean, the, turn, the, the page turns and we start looking at two other RFAs almost immediately, and we'll get back to William in those details in a moment. Mm-hmm. But based on this experience, I'm sure you can understand this. There's some anxiety in the fan base that as of November 30th, 2019, we could be doing this dance again <laughs> with Mitch Marner and, and Austin Matthews. And if Nylander feels like he got the best deal possible that last day as of November 30th, why would Matthews and Marner think it makes sense to sign as of July 1st or, or as of today? Why wouldn't they wait until the deadline? I think the major uh, the major difference, uh, Brian, is that uh, you know, we've. I, I can't speak to the discussion. I know Lou spoke with Lewis Gross last year uh, in the fall and in the winter. But um, you know, with with Austin and Mitch, we've been in in close touch with their representatives uh, throughout, and 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 will continue to be. And and it's our ambition to obviously have a conclusion to their situations far in advance of this, and and continue to have open dialogue with them and and work with them. So uh, I think one of the great things about uh, this market and this fan base is that people care enough to be anxious about the team when there's excellent young players that are coming due for contracts, and uh, we'll we'll be working to alleviate that uh, that anxiety and that nervousness uh, through how we handle it here going through the the winter and the spring. Kyle, you just mentioned the marketplace and anxiousness Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at any point during all of this, were you just tired of hearing about it? Because I know O-Dog and I were tired of talking about it every day. I mean, yeah, we the sent coverage. numerous emails back to people saying not it's, talking it's about enough, it. It's enough, it's enough. But I mean, at some point, I'm sure you heard how loud the market was on the outside. Uh, was it uh, tough uh, some days to kind of go through that process? Uh, I... Just sorry, guys. I can't hear you right now. Just one sec. Technical difficulties. This could have been a problem as of uh, 4:52 p.m. <laughs> exactly. Eastern time on Saturday. You guys got a if William no calls him flip phone. I know. Can the Leafs get him a better phone, please? A better coverage. <laughs> uh, sorry, Lewis. Are yeah. you there, William? Yeah. <laughs> You're breaking up on me. Can We're trying imagine? to work out a deal. Do you here. imagine if that happened? Though I, I'm telling you, I kept thinking <laughs> about that. That's all oh, I could think about. Oh, it changed the whole landscape of of everything of the whole conversation. No Kia yeah. flip phone. No yeah. texting. Yeah. What kind of phone are you on right now? <laughs> I, I'm on. I'm bored with Steve Keogh's iPhone, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Sorry you can hear that. us though. You got us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been a kind of a goofy process. The the super fan in Columbus who was a Blue Jacket <laughs> fan that thought he had a scoop. You were in Switzerland at one point. I mean, it's it's been an experience. It has been. Yeah, the, the, uh, I saw I saw Jeff last week say he was he just didn't want to talk about it anymore, and it, it got to the, the point at the end where you know you would and this it, it was always the fans have been have been great. I think they they largely in my experience here have been. And you'd have the odd person that would yell at you, you know, what's going on with Nylander, sign Nylander, or, or you know, the opposite end of the spectrum. But nothing, nothing too, too, too much. And and we've tried to keep the focus here on the group that's that's uh, here and and uh, and playing. So I think it was a big media topic, and rightfully so. And and uh, I'm sorry that uh, we had to put you guys through that. What was the day to day like? Is it? You know, the GM of the Leafs goes into his office, has a coffee, does work, and then all of a sudden he's like, "Now nah, I'll call William's agent and see what's up with him. Or is there, like, long stretches, no communication? Uh, communication? How, how was that daily process going through it? I think it was different, uh, Jeff, at different times in the, in the process. Uh, you know, there were some days where you would be on the phone uh, with them long portions of the day, then you'd go, you know, a few days without communication. Brandon Pridham. Uh, from our staff, uh, assistant general manager, he had uh, you know the majority of the discussions with with Lewis Gross and you know Lewis and he uh, talked uh, probably to each other more than they they had ever wished to um, <laughs> as we tried to try to work our way through it. But I'm I'm thankful to the, to both of them for their efforts throughout this uh, this process. But it, it was it was different at different times. Some days you'd be on the phone. It felt like the whole day and inching towards a, a conclusion than other days you you just you you would just feel like it was things were very cold and and uh you, you probably weren't going to talk for for a bit so. with, with kyle dubas how would you compare uh the two experiences waiting for nylander to get done and waiting for Tavares to get done oh the opposite i i think the the Tavares one was uh you know a, a major 
um, anxiety in terms of wondering whether you were, you know, whether your team had had presented well enough and whether you'd done a good enough job preparing the group to to go in and, and convey to John what we were about. And then, you know, there's the, you know, you're trying to read the tea leaves every time there's some news out or a rumor out about, you know, different teams that are going in and, and where he's going to end up. And then you get into the contract part and the contract part for him uh, was an hours long process, um, you know, going, you know, starting on, on the first and just getting done um, because uh, just the nature of it as an unrestricted free agent. And William's case, it was, it was obviously a much longer process. And with, with Mitch and Austin, it'll be even, even longer where you're just, you're, you're sort of grinding uh, towards, uh, towards the conclusion. In John's case, it was, it was expedited in, into the, uh, into the length of a week. So very, very, very different. Um, one of the first things John Tavares said once he was signed, he mentioned a, a, a promise that this team would make sure that they kept this core together, which would include mm-hmm. Nylander and uh, Matthews and Marner. And William just spoke with the media about a half an hour ago, and he stated that you've promised him that as long as you're in charge of the Leafs, you will not be trading him. Uh, can you confirm that? And if so, why would you why would you grant him that promise? I think what what I had, uh, what I told him throughout the whole process was, I think especially as things started to uh, as things started to to ramp up and the deadline came closer and you know different teams were inquiring and there were more teams involved and rumors started to pick up. I think you know he what he wanted to know was he wasn't just being uh, wasn't just being signed to be traded right away and. What I told him was that's absolutely not the case, and I, you know, I said to Lewis Gross and to William, I'm, I'm on the record as saying, in training camp, that you know we want William to be here as long as I'm here. Um, I think he's an excellent young player. I think he'll continue to. Him. He's only 22 years old, and, and at that age, you expect that a player is only going to continue to improve and improve. And knowing uh, his disposition, the way that he handles himself, and the way that he works, uh, I have full faith that that he will continue to do that. So I, I don't think we want to get into the the business of, of jettisoning uh, very good young players here. And uh, and that's that's why I feel comfortable in saying that to you guys and, and to William and to anybody. Early in the process, Brendan Shanahan held a, a rare media scrum and, and brought up his experiences in Detroit and uh-huh. mentioned something along the lines of, you know, we'd like our, our young players to take a little bit less so that they can all stick together. Um I don't see William in this situation based on comparables. I don't see him. I don't think he took less, so to speak. I, I think he got a pretty good deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you feel like this is a team-friendly deal, quote unquote? I feel like it's a fair deal, Brian. And, and I mean, we can get into everything and try to grind everybody down. I think you know, in some I've I've read some of the uh, apprehension about it, and I think they're. You know, it's it's easy to compare them to to deals that were done you know two or three years ago and say well you know we, they should have got him for this guy and and at the other end of the spectrum there are people that say well he should have got more uh, based on these other players and our our ambition was to find a deal that was fair for William and, and for the team and and then it will be up to to me to to follow through on on making the salary cap work for our team so it was never our ambition to and I, and I know um, it's not it was never Brendan's ambition to uh, to grind uh, these guys into into deals where you know they were you know forced to take them or or be threatened to be shipped out or anything like that we want our players to be treated fairly and we have to manage all of that up against the salary cap, and that's what we'll continue to do. As this was coming down to the deadline, Mike Babcock seemed to be predicting the future, uh, <laughs> saying he always <laughs> believed this would happen. Uh, he's going to be a Leaf. I got to believe that. Is is that just him trying to be positive? Do you have any issues with those comments, or it's just the coach wanting a talented player? That's that's I think Mike being Mike, and any coach wanting their team to be. Uh, as talented as it possibly can, and it was the exact same thing that that he was saying to to everybody. And um, you know, Mike is is not one to have much gray. It's black and white, and <laughs> what he says in here is what he says to the media. And I, I have no problem or any issue with that at all. I mean, he he had a uh, you know he he obviously I think every, any coach would have wanted uh, that player back in the fold, and and uh, you know especially as it got. Uh, down to the final week, and the media questions about us started to become more and more prominent. I think he just he just gave his uh, his opinion and how he felt about it. And I I have no no issue with that. It didn't didn't affect 
uh, me or the negotiation one bit. With Maple Leafs GM Kyle Dubas, uh, as a result of, of William signing, obviously you've had to make some roster moves, uh-huh. some corresponding moves. You've traded Josh Levo for a, a younger prospect in the American Hockey League today. Uh-huh. Can you take us through that deal? Uh, it was just uh, quite simply, Brian, We in the summer uh, I met with Josh and, and Ian Pulver, uh, Josh's representative, and had essentially, you know, I'd seen and, and Josh was was been here the whole time I've been here and have seen the way the last two years have gone. And their concern was having another season where he's, you know, scratched for long portions of the year and that if it was ever a remote chance that that would happen, that, that they had my word that uh, that we would, uh, that we would find a better opportunity for Josh and and try to move him move him along uh, for all that he's done here and how he's conducted himself in very difficult circumstances. So that was just simply uh, us following through on our word and and finding a a, a good opportunity for someone that's been an excellent uh, person uh, in his time here and, and we wish him all the best in Vancouver. Uh, in terms of of the the salary cap hit this year, it's kind of a strange CBA mm-hmm. loophole. Uh, so. Williams cap hit is 10.2 million. You guys obviously had that kind of flexibility, but it's a big hit. Um, how does that affect what you're capable of doing between now and the trade deadline? Uh, our cap space will continue to accrue daily uh, before the trade deadline, and um, you know we will continue to have space and we'll have some flexibility to be able to to do what we feel we'll have to to improve the team so um you know we still have some we still have a good amount uh, at face value and and we'll have and that will just continue to grow as we work our way towards the deadline so i i know that it, there's no way of really avoiding that in these contracts that are done late in the year is you're going to have a a fairly big or significant cap hit in, in year one and and you know we were fortunate in, in our circumstances with the job that brandon pridham does here but you know that that we did have a lot of cap space this season, so that wasn't really an issue. The the out year uh, cap hits were, were obviously the uh, the important ones, and in, in this one for us. We'll get you out of here on this, Kyle. Um, there's Thanks, been guys. a lot of focus on on this negotiation, but also uh, you know a lot on the ice. And your team, I think, second overall in the NHL. You guys are 19 and eight. Now you add a guy like William Nylander. I think you probably had Stanley Cup aspirations prior to the season, but now that we stand here early December, Williams back in the fold. Um, how do you feel about your team's chances this year? Well, I think we're we're in a very very tough division. It's going to be it's it's nice to think that and and to look way down the road. But I think that's why I always say you know we have to focus in our division and and look where we stand and. You know, you you lose a game, and then you're suddenly you know you're down to third place. You're not even a home ice team in the first round, and as, as what happened a few weeks ago, we lost a game in, in Columbus, and and then we didn't you know we we won on Saturday, but then we didn't play. Uh, we, then we didn't. It was on Wednesday. We didn't play for two days, and and just by not playing, you moved to out of home ice in the first round, even though you're in fourth overall or fifth overall in the league, and. Our division is very difficult. You know, we Tampa Bay is is a perennial contender. Boston as well, and Buffalo. Uh, and it's going to be exciting to play them tomorrow because they've had a great resurgence here. Jason Bottrell's done a great job with them. So our our focus has to be on just trying to uh, work our way up in our division to even have uh, home ice in the first round, and and that's what we'll be focused on here during the season and and try to set ourselves up well for the beginning of the playoffs. Well, congrats on getting this job done. Now you're on the clock for all these other contracts and the trade deadline, and uh, try to enjoy it as long as you can. I'm sure I'll hear nothing about any of those other situations. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk never, about it. Never, <laughs> never. How much are you giving Kapanen? Tell us right now, please. Well, Darren Drager handles that. That's right. Know. We'll make sure that he hooks us up with that kind of information. Thanks, Kyle. We appreciate it. See you guys. Thank you.